imagine now that cookies are in that place where the food group is around things that you don't enjoy. You have kind of a feeling a little bit of, maybe, I don't know if you have a little disgust about that food, but certainly it's a food group that you are not interested in at all. And, and again now, when your uh, cookies are back down in that place where they've been, allow your yes finger to rise. Excellent. So now uh, what I'd like you to do is you'll uh, come forward into the future some moment and see yourself uh, uh, walking around and, and see uh, cookies. And uh, matter of fact, uh, as you see yourself walking around, join yourself so as you're looking out through your own eyes and that you see the cookies. And as you see the cookies, allow your yes finger to rise. Okay, that you have this resource. And allow me to share something now, a little about cookies. Cookies really often have uh, a flour in it that's very much processed quite incredibly. It has a lot, and, uh, and so this becomes a little acidic in the system. Um, we fare much better when we're having a little bit more of an alkalitic diet. The other thing about the cookies is it has a lot of fat in the cookies. And what a wonderful thing it is to be able to put this food group aside and at some point maybe in the future you may care to reevaluate the situation again. And at that point you'll decide that maybe you'd like to keep the cookies where they are and that you'll have the ability to reevaluate this whenever you'd like to do that in the future. Now what I'd like you to do is you now that you sense this feeling of a sense of resourcefulness inside. As you feel this resourcefulness that you have now, moving away from cookies, allow your finger to lift as you lengthen the inspiration through your nose. Good. Now, as your finger lowers in a moment, what I'd like you to do is to go back into the past and think of some moment where you would have enjoyed having this resource. And as you think of that moment, allow your finger to lower. Now, go back to some other moment where you would have enjoyed having this resource in the past. And as you, as you remember this moment in the past where you really enjoy having this resource under your belt, allow your finger, your yes finger again to rise. And allow your finger to stay where it is. And as you think now of some another moment in the past where you would enjoy having had this resource, and having the ability to remember now, having had this resource in the past before, that you're imagining that you have gone into the future sometime. Now you are thinking back to this moment, having the resource today that you would have in the, that you have in the future, having this today. Go back now, thinking that you've gone into the future, back into the past, to another moment, again where you would enjoy having this resource and as you as you experience this moment and having this resource allow the finger again to lower. Okay. Alright. So now what I'd like you to do is to is to imagine that your body now is going to tell us how much you are feeling a sense of success with with cookies, placing cookies in a spot where a place that's not so desirable anymore at all, where there may even be a tiny little bit of aversion, but mostly you remain neutral about cookies. And when you when you when you are feeling a sense of having gone into the future, 
and that you've been successful. How much does your body feel now that you, you've been successful? And show us now how much you sense the feeling of success with this. If your hand completely rests totally where it was, that's meaning that you totally feel successful with this. So go now to that place where your body senses you're feeling successful. We're going to have the opportunity to do this with some other things. And you can know that your unconscious mind has a program now and that you can allow your dreamer sometimes to dream at night and go through this process. And maybe you, maybe you do this in a moment when you are daydreaming during the day. And that the main thing is you know now your brain is understanding that it has a program that can move things spatially to that location from a place where there's a place that you enjoy to a place where it's not so enjoyable. What a wonderful thing it is to forget all things that you love to forget and allow this to come up from inside you out. That you go about the folly of life doing other things and, and that this process that we've gone through now is something that arises from the inside out. And mostly you're just going about the form of life. And what a wonderful thing it is in a moment here now. I'm going to be counting backwards from five. When I get to one, you'll be feeling that you're sinking even deeper now. Deeper. I'm wondering what level of relaxation you can reach today. That you can anchor this sense of relaxation so that you can go to this state of relaxation when next we work with each other and that you have this sense of feeling relaxed when there's a moment in the future that you'd enjoy this that you have a, a way of anchoring that maybe that's maybe that's a memory of the sound of a voice time that allows you to feel relaxed. Maybe it's the lengthening of the inspiration through your nose that you remember this breath right. And you remember how relaxed your body's feeling and how your jaw feels relaxed in your face. And how much you're feeling a sense of the earth and gravity drawing you into the centre. Interesting about the, the phenomena that, that we just went through 
is that that's true. People do have things stored in spaces around their body. And that it's the interaction of these spaces, matter of fact. So that when I'm talking to someone, I notice that they've gone with their eyes to a certain location in space and that they're actually focused on a space and it's actually the aperture of the eye, the distance with which uh, the eye and the muscles of the eye and the location are all acting as an accessing cue. So, for instance, uh, Terry had things that were uh, pleasant to her, more in front of her, and uh, uh, where Terry had them stored, food uh, in general uh, was stored a little bit uh, to the left. But mostly, food groups that were interesting to her, she had stored out in front, and uh, the, point, the place that she pointed was uh, within easy reach, was the food group, more or less, that was, that was food groups that she enjoyed. And, right, and, uh, and so what you noticed was that the place where she went to, uh, where, the, where she had stored some foods that kind of was not appealing to her at all, she'd stored them uh, further to the left and more or less uh, out of sight and down. And uh, they, were, they were in a place where uh, she didn't have quite reach of whereas the food group where she enjoyed that was a little bit closer to her uh, in her reach. Um, so we, you know, we do store information around us in this way and we are interacting with that space to access uh, information. So another example of a spatial sort, and then uh, there's a couple of questions, uh, would be, uh, let's just say that there's something that you're building about yourself which is an ideal and literally the person can imagine this possibly to be in their right hand and that they're imagining now uh, something else in their other hand um, the, what's in their other hand is something that perhaps that they would enjoy integrating with something that's their ideal in their right hand so they're looking at their left and they're seeing themselves in their left uh, let's say that it's uh, a piece where somebody is arguing quite a bit, always getting involved in argument and, and not so much having the skills to be able to diffuse that. So that you see yourself in one hand in this mode and you see this other self. And this other self has the ability to be like a guru. And that uh, this man uh, at one point was uh, seeking enlightenment and he came uh, to this guru and this guru was kind of just peeking out from behind a, a robe. You could just barely see his face. And uh, he was just sitting there. And uh, so this person came over and uh, said, Oh, Guru, I've, uh, re I'm really feeling enlightened. And I'm really sensing that uh, I've reached this sense of enlightenment. And uh, without any words, uh, uh, the Guru uh, reached out from behind the cloak and went, slap this person's face and, uh, <laughs> and this person went oh, 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 oh. you know and uh, was kind of quite offended that his uh, face had been slapped and then the guru uh, said to this uh, fellow uh, uh, go away and come back when nothing can perturb you So, uh, enlightenment truly is this state where you are deciding what it is about life that creates flow for you and that you have, you, you, you have a preference for being in that state. And there isn't anything greater than the sum of what it is inside you first to consider that. So here's this person that's the ideal self is in their right and they're seeing how this person is and then they're seeing this other person that's a little, little bent over and out of shape and out of balance with things and you're seeing this other person that's you in your right hand that truly is uh, your balanced self and then you see these two images as you bring your hands together you see these two in images slowly coming together and then totally coming in harmony with each other and blending together. So then you're seeing 
a, a vigorous, innovative and calm and enlightened self. So basically, literally, that visualization is occurring in your brain. And, uh, and so this is another example of using a spatial squash. Uh, other things uh, in the use of spatial squash and analog marking is sometimes when I'm working with somebody I'm actually directing my voice to one spot where something is and then I'm directing my voice to another spot where something else is. And so you can be working on that level as well. Another thing that you can do is you can analog mark by pointing or by gesturing to one place. Maybe that's maybe that you walk over to one place in the room and that you have over here anchored a sense of how we're feeling about things and, um, and that we've talked about how excellent we were feeling last night and when we think back in life you know, to last night how you had the ability to walk through something that you feared and, uh, and how much you have the ability later on in life to have a positive voice that coaches you wonderfully, that says that you can do things. And so what I've done, as you are looking in this direction, I've placed our feelings that I come back to collect over here, okay, over the, to your right, and then over here, the internal voice that you have that coaches you positively, over here on your left. So basically, uh, there's a spatial, like, spatial sort, more or less, is starting to occur that I've marked things out over here and I've marked things out, marked uh, feelings out to your right. Um, and so people are doing that. Good speakers are doing that. You know, they're doing it intuitively. And uh, so you can become an excellent speaker in the way that you uh, present uh, by making use of uh, uh, spatial location. Uh, uh, remembering uh, what's in these studios what's down more to the right and what's down more to the left and what's up more to the right and what's up more to the left and what's more or less in the mid-range to the right and mid-range to the left and making use of these uh, spaces David, if you're going to be a speaker who constructs a speech along these lines we'd be looking at the audience is left and right as opposed to you. Okay, so now uh, you have to make the distinction, you see. So now what I did with my analogue was I said, as you are sitting there, and I gestured like this, so that, you know, actually, you know, you are coming from yourself. Otherwise, then I would be, to, I would be congruent with the way you were seeing me. I would say, down here, you know, to my, to my right for my feelings which is your left, okay? But you are totally seeing it as actually your feelings, down to your right and down to uh, my left, okay? Down to your left. So uh, when, you're, when you're swapping it around so it's going to come from the audience and you want them to have that perspective, you can be gesturing toward yourself from the audience with your hands toward yourself with your hands, indicating that spatial, spatial you know, place that you want people, or you can turn around literally and show people that you are, you are actually placing it as it is that you're sitting. But anyway, that's a good idea to be clear on that. Mm -hmm. Someone the other day was working with me, and uh, they literally, you know, for me, it was sensing that everything was crossed over, and I didn't know that they had swapped things around in their head. There wasn't an the indication they hadn't given me that, that they had swapped things, you know, so that they were marking things out for, for me, you know, my, the way that I was facing them, you know. So mostly uh, you're, you're doing it as it is that's congruent in, for you, you know, because you are looking at me sensing, sensing this aspect of yourself, and unless you actually make the distinction. Uh, okay, so uh, what about questions that we have uh, about that process? Uh, I noticed that you did some anchoring. What did you anchor and when did you anchor it? Okay, uh, well, what, I, what I thought I would do is, uh, uh, was to give, uh, to give Terry a sense of already having come through some of this so that, so that she has a history of, of, of having, having
having that resource. Um, did, did Terry know where you were putting your hands while she had her eyes closed? When you said, um, I'm putting this behind you, you're putting this behind you, and you're going to have that. And on the, some level, her intuitive mind was, was sensing that, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So, what, what uh, did you anchor specifically? Did you anchor okay, her um, when? Okay, so I anchored the, the resource and I, cha I, I chained some things to that resource. What was the resource? Uh, the resource was, uh, was having a sense of uh, having accomplished what it is that we set out to accomplish and having already, you know, been some weeks or even a month into the future having already done this. By having Terry go back into the past, her past, Maybe she went back to about a month, or maybe it was even further back. How far back did you go, do you think? Uh, but looking... Yeah. Um, I did one from the other day, one from a month ago, and one when your mom's not was good. Okay, so that was, you went back at least a month. So, so that's a feeling of uh, sense that the person's already been a month on this on the program <laughs> and uh, really done well having had success so that was part of the strategy so that's what you, you anchored that uh, I anchored that as a resource and uh, the uh, I anchored a resource to be able to go back and uh, give Terry the resource that we've we just organized okay so that she can sense that she's she's uh, had this now in the past this resource so that uh, yeah She's feeling that she's already arrived, you know, a month into the future, actually, having gone through the program. So uh, the anchoring was like doing a history change, okay, as well as a spatial sort that we did. The other reason why I did the anchoring was because I wanted to build a resource state, actually, and to change some things. So uh, one other thing that we changed was, was lengthening of the inspiration through the nose and a feeling of a sense of success. And so there's, the spa having put it in a spatial location, having a sense of feeling of success, and, and uh, really uh, extending that feeling by lengthening the inspiration through the nose was those three things were chained together in that anchor. Okay. So you could be creative, actually. You bring that to bear. Oh, so you, you, you stack some resources into yes. the same anchor. So I asked her to go back and think of a moment in the past and she was looking at when cookies. some maybe cookies arrived from her, you know, her, her, uh, her, her uh, mother-in-law or, you know, there was some other moment when cookies arrived, right? <laughs> and uh, when cookies arrived, I asked her, wouldn't it be wonderful that she had this resource? Yeah. Boom. Yeah. You see? Okay. David, I have a question that... Um, <laughs> is just coming up for me now. If my understanding of that if our words have a physiology, that everything that we're doing creates some sort of a chemistry, creates electric in the brain, and then some sort of a magnetism also is occurring. So with a spatial sort, what is occurring in terms of the neurochemistry and the electrics and the magnetism something's coming in for me that I know that there is something happening that this thing is no longer because of the space and the chemistry that's occurring is no longer have the magnetic pull where yes. you might want to bring something closer to me like I did the bar this yes. morning which actually magnetized me towards it yes that's a question with kind of an answer there too, but I, there's, some, right. there's something happening. In other words, uh, Jenny's question is, is a statement, mm -hmm. actually, that, that uh, these spatial locations does change the electrochemical configuration in the brain, right? In other words, those things that we're sensing are most important to us, uh, the things that we're, we're uh, consuming in life, more or less, they are things, in fact, that we do put in our visual field you know, in front, because we're reminded of those things. Things, in fact, where somebody's not so wanting to be reminded of something, they literally do put it behind them, actually. So then it's not so much more now in the visual field as a memory, having a structure that's actually behind the person, rather than in front of them. So one day I worked with uh, this woman, what I realised was she kind of was unable to play 
every time we'd be in a play for mode, she really had difficulty uh, playing. She kind of would be separate a little bit, and she was very stoic, you know. And uh, and then one day, you know, we were in a situation where where we were, uh, everybody was in a play mode out here, and uh, I noticed that she even had some tears in her eyes. Uh, anyway, so later on, I I asked her, you know, what is it? What is it that's stopping you from uh, playing? And she really burst into tears because this was a major thing that had been happening to her. And uh, when she was relaxed, I asked her, what is it that's happening? Because you know, I, I hear her eyes were going going uh, horizontal and to the left. So I know that I knew that she was hearing something in her head and that she had remembered before. And she wasn't quite aware of what that was at the time. But when she was relaxed, I asked her, what is it that you're hearing that you've heard before? And all of a sudden she went, oh, it's my father. And, uh, and I asked her, you know, that, can she hear what her dad is saying? And her dad was more or less like, and I asked her where it was, and she pointed with her left hand, and it was kind of up high, real close to her, but a bit higher than herself. So I, really, I know by the spatial location of her finger that she's relatively small, maybe she's about five or six when this is occurring and uh, in her life because of the, the height with which she points to and, uh, and that dad's very close and his voice is relatively loud and the message basically is an authoritative message telling her that she needs to get and do something which is about her work and her what she needs to clear, clean up or something like that and that it's aimed at her her uh, 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 feeling less of a person because she is she is playing and basically dad's dad's saying get and do your <coughs> stuff whatever that is you know and uh, you know and quit this playing act stuff right now and uh, so anyway so this was very loud was very close to her and it was kind of really pointing down at her mostly when somebody's kind of having a little bit of a difficulty playing usually it is because there's authority messages inside maybe there's a lack of role models that this person's had in their life um, or uh, uh, certainly it's or maybe sometimes it's religious ideology as well usually it's like a combination of those three things so uh, when she was relaxed I asked her now to start to fade that voice and as she faded it into the distance I asked her to put that in a place where she could easily place it where if she felt she'd like to have the memory that she could still yet have the memory but that it will be really comfortable for her now and so what she did was I saw her take her hand and she moved this round behind her and like it kind of started to move away out there and and as the volume was turned down on the voice you know I asked her to indicate with her hand and it was like way way so it was very soft really behind her and uh, and then uh, we made a little bit of a break of state I asked her what it was that we did yesterday to focus on something and she so she was she was going over some things that happened yesterday and then uh, and then you know a few 20 seconds or so passed by and I asked her how is it that you're feeling now about about that voice and uh, she indicated she was really feeling excellent she was feeling comfortable okay so that's another example of a, a special sort is it necessary I noticed when you were, when you were doing that, that you kept saying forget the things you want to forget. And is it necessary, I mean, I see people that are having traumatic childhood, some of my friends, and they're going back in their dredge and everything else, and they feel like for them to get well, that they have to live through all these again and talk about it. Is it necessary for a person to do that, or, or, or can you just say, okay, okay. this happened, and go on with that? Okay, it's necessary for somebody who has this belief, for somebody who doesn't have this belief, it's not necessary. Uh, 
so if somebody, you know, that's literally it. So it's possible either to change the person's belief or work with it, in fact, and go back and uh, ask, you know, what I'm always doing with everybody is saying to them, usually, when you go back into the past, you know, if you're going to do that, go back into the past to access something that's a resource. And no matter what it is that you go back to, it's possible to find what it is that the learning was. Because all there really is in any experience actually is learning. So if you have certain patterns and the old way therapy is looking back saying, well, you're like this because your father did this to you, that's of no use with the, what we're doing now. Unless you feel like it's of use, but... Yes, it, it, it would be of use, uh, you know, if the person was sensing that there was a need to actually feel cleared of something, you know, that they needed to go back to understand something about the past. Possibly it's uh, important if there was a sense that the person would be able to learn something, that then they would fit this in, you know. That So from that day on, from, you know, that day onward now, you know, the, they have learned something actually about how things were and uh, they have now learned something so they've wired something in which is now a little different to how things have been you know, or were in the past but what's happening when I, when, when I was doing like last night was saying oh yeah I've learned that I have this pattern and I remember you know when I yes. did it that I was going like this and, and you said I was future pacing it yes Okay, so uh, uh, what, Ta- what Tanya learned yesterday about uh, how she performed was, uh, was that, that she had had a pattern that was actually future pacing uh, stuckness. And, mm-hmm. and so, she, because she was going up into visual construct and to auditory construct and constructing a moment that this would be in the future. And if she was doing that, then that's presupposing that she's going to be stuck in the day. Because, because it, she's going to be stuck in the future, then she's certainly going to be stuck during the day. Uh, in the past, uh, visually constructing a future pacing was presupposing that she would be still stuck. And, uh, and so the learning was that, that uh, when she's feeling successful and she's remembering what it is that she can do, what she has done, what she has the ability to do, she's more involved somewhat in visual memory. And uh, in her, uh, so up to the left, or auditory memory, remembering what it is that she can do, or down in her kinesthetic feelings and her ability to sequence something. Uh, so the learning was literally that she could more or less be somewhat in the studio of her memory and her ability to do things, as opposed to her constructing things and imagining things and then talking to herself about this. So being up in the top right hand side or the bottom left in that vector is more like an introspective vector. So the thing that, uh, that Tonya learned was that she could be in this other vector, more involved in visual memory and ability to sequence things which is about the external world more and actually what it is that her experience is. And then if she's wanting to future pace uh, something, that she can future pace her ability to ha- have done this already. So, uh, so last night, you know, in being with uh, Tonya, I asked her, you know, do you feel that this is something now that you can do? And she was nodding her head, yes. She looked and she saw how it was that things happened and she senses inside herself there's something that she can do. And so... So then I asked her, is this something that you sense that you feel you can do now and have, and now you've done it? If you feel inside yourself that you have done this already, then I sense that you've used this strategy of future pacing in a way that benefits you. Okay. Anything else about uh, spatial thoughts? All right, now what I think that we'll do is, well, let's do another uh, technique uh, involving uh, a squash, basically, where uh, one thing is brought into another. Okay, so we'll use a little bit slightly different technique, and uh, Penny's got something that uh, she would like for us to work on. So, um, so why don't you, Penny, come on up here, and 
we'll, uh, would you like to be in a chair, sweetie? Um, are you comfortable? Uh, oh, let's, let's put you in a chair because uh, that way. Uh, and, uh, and so now what I really want is, I really want for Penny to go out of this as much as possible. And I'm going to really help her do this. Um, and so I'm going to have her doing various things with her hands. Okay? So that her mind is, is in this state and that we really have uh, tapped into her, her unconscious mind. Okay. And so uh, the major thing is uh, uh, that Penny can go, start to go inside now. And allow your eyes to close once you are feeling inside and that you can remain in this, in this place and that you can even enhance this more and more. And uh, what I'd like you to do is to literally imagine that, that we've tied a string around your left arm and uh, in a loop and that we've uh, filled a hot air uh, balloon that's uh, really kind of uh, weightless and it's uh, drawing your hand up. And so the moment that we tie this around your, your uh, wrist and we connect it to the hot air balloon now and that you have the ability to imagine that your hand is being tugged. So that's one thing that we're going to have you uh, be doing so that you're feeling one of your hands now and maybe both of your hands and that your unconscious mind can select and decide whether it's one hand or it's both. Uh, and the main thing is that you'll feel, you'll feel uh, your arms uh, becoming lighter, and you'll feel, you'll feel literally the balloon starting to tug on your arm. And the more that you imagine this, the more aspects of your brain that you bring into this process now, the more likely it is that that we are, we are, we have affected a change. And that the more cells that we bring into this process, the more likely it is that we are eliciting a large enough population of cells in the head to affect this change. So now the more that you have the ability to use your imagination, and you remember a moment in the past where you were acting, or you had to imagine something that was occurring, and that you bring in your imaginative component, and maybe before we do this, possibly one hand can still yet be doing this. And allow me to use this hand for a moment. So this arm can be imagining that it's got this string around it and it's being drawn up because I'm going to do something with this hand in a moment. So pick a finger on your left hand that will twitch by itself and lift. Uh, okay, so this is going to be... Allow this one to be no, yes? And pick a pick a finger on this side now for yes. Okay, excellent. All right. Okay, so now what I'd like you to do is to go back into the past, where you really were in a lovely place. And uh, when you are there, allow your little finger on the left side to lift, indicating that you're there. And whilst you are doing that, you can also be imagining that there's this balloon and it's tugging on your right arm and it's ever so gently, excellent, starting to make your right hand uh, float. And uh, what I'd like you to do is to uh, be in that place, that wonderful place that you are. What I'd like you to do is to be remembering some things that are about that so that you can be sometimes visualising and zooming in and zooming out on something and changing your spatial location that you zoom around sometimes you really magnify something and then you study it like you did like a child that you're so interested that you went right into a dewdrop or something on the ground and how intricate a world was in there and whilst you're feeling a sense that you're relaxing more, in a moment your hand will start to float. And as your hand starts to float, you'll start to mark out your ability to relax more and more. 
and with each with each distance that your hand floats, be relaxing more and more. And take some time now to be in that place. And some minutes will pass. And the more that you are looking at the intricacy of things, and how much you have the ability to intensify the colour, and how much sometimes you have the ability to be able to change your spatial location. And whilst you're doing this, you're feeling yourself being drawn, drawn into the earth. And sometimes you're feeling how it is that your feet are on the ground. And other times you're lengthening your inspiration with each breath in and each breath out. Relaxing And now as this hand ever so gently is starting to float back down toward your your leg, relaxing more and more. And imagining a piece of you that's going to sleep. And allow now this other arm to feel the tug of the hot air balloon. Excellent. And you'll, you'll still yet be able to use these fingers indicating things to me. And I'll be asking you some questions about things. And whilst I'm asking you questions about things, you can be indicating yes or no by indicating that this finger was yes, that this finger was no. And what I'd like you to do now while you're relaxing more the text of the once this hand is floating and you're relaxing even more and more, and that everything can be part of this process, what I'm going to ask you to do now is to imagine that you can see a hand coming up where it ordinarily would be coming up. And as you see this hand coming up, allow your yes finger to indicate that you see the hand coming up and that you'll freeze a frame of that. And when you've done that, allow your yes finger to indicate. Excellent, okay. Now what I'd like you to do is to, you've frozen a frame of that, excellent. And, and is, it, is it your left hand or your right, is it your right hand? Yes, okay. So it's the right hand that you've seen this time. In a moment we'll also do this with your left hand the moment now we're going to do this with your right hand so now what you've done is you you see a picture of your hand coming up and you've frozen a frame of that and now what what I'd like you to do is to blank the screen out when you blank the screen out go back to that place and when you're at that place the favorite place again allow your no finger to indicate that you're back in that place Excellent. Good. All right. Now what I'd like you to do is to think of something which is going to take the place of that, which is which is going to be a reminder to you of what it is that you really want. And this can be something that's symbolic. And possibly it's it's it can be anything. The main thing is that it can be it's going to be symbolic reminding you of your resource and your ability to relax. And whilst you are thinking about that and once you've thought of it, you'll indicate by by your your uh, yes finger twitching a little bit. And, and whilst you're gathering that excellent, what I'd like you to do is to be adjusting the picture of that up so it's just perfect, so that you go through the brightness, the clarity, the clearness, how close it is to you. And whilst you're adjusting that, zoom in and zoom out and move around this 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 uh, symbolic picture so that it's just perfect. And whilst you're doing that, I'm going to share something with you that is to do with your inside, your innate ability to feel relaxed in life and how much you've learned and how much 
being reinforced with things that you've understood inside. That's you. That's being enfolded. That has now unfolded. It's a sense of being relaxed in life and how much a wonderful thing it is to feel that the one thing that stays constant in your life, the one thing that you share with us, that we share with each other, is the inside, the universality of our mind. And how this is like a steady state flow, like a stream of liberation like a river of completeness inside self and how valuable that is to us that you have the ability to live in your divine self and that mostly this energy has been there in the past and that now this energy is here arrived it takes the place of some energy that was there in the past so there's not so much of a need for the habit that was and that we're going to be doing something with that habit now and so you now what I'm asking is you have this this uh, symbolic picture when it's just a just right indicate again by moving your uh, your yes finger okay now what I'd like you to do is to blank the screen out and bring back the stuck state picture and when the stuck state picture is on the screen and and the resource picture is down in the bottom right hand corner of the screen indicated by in, by lifting your yes finger excellent alright so now what I'd like